welcome to lecture 15. In this lecture, we will discuss the systems and process improvement in any uh, urban governance paradigm. Uh, in this week, we have been discussing various aspects of organizational development. Uh, in the beginning, we started with the discussion that for uh, providing uh, better service in the municipal areas, uh, municipality or municipal corporation or um, any uh, third tier government uh, should be working efficiently. And we have um, seen that for that performance, efficient performance, three factors are responsible. One is motivational factor, one is uh, environmental factor and the second, third is the, the capacity of the uh, organization which matters. Now mostly the motivational and the environmental factor is mostly external and which matters most in day to day functioning of an organization is the capacity of the organization and out of that capacity one by one we have discussed the like transparency and accountability, urban reform and managing change all those aspects. So, today we will see one very important aspect uh, for improving the day to day service delivery in municipalities or corporation that is the systems and process improvement. So, in this lecture first we will discuss that what is systems and processes, some definitional and some conceptual. Uh, discussions. We will discuss how we can improve the systems and processes and use of technology and in systems and, and processes what could be there as an example that that is what we are going to discuss today. Now, first I start with what is a system and as a process. I ask you one simple example that when a common man or common citizen submits a uh, application to a municipality for uh, asking a water supply connection or for uh, kind of a um, sanction of a building plan. Uh, now, how much time a normal a moderate municipality they take to, uh, to accord those kind of approval? It varies. Sometimes an efficient organization can definitely provide that approval within one week. There are organizations who, who can even after two months also they are not able to say whether it is approved or not approved. So, those kind of problems are there. Now, which matters exactly uh, in non-performing or performing or service delivery or non-service delivery. Let us see in little details that how the internal systems and process matters and influences the outcome of the of a service. For the, our case, any service as we discussed like say building plan sanction or a water supply connection. Now, please see this example. Suppose we take an example of, of building plan sanction. sanction. And suppose the first stage is that submission of, of application with all documents. So, this becomes the first stage which is done by a common citizens. Next is that the application plus documents checked by checked by say uh, assistant or junior engineer. Then there can be two scenario. One is that the after initial checking, it could be found that yes, it is. It could be forwarded, and no, it may not be forwarded because the papers are not in order. So revision could be asked to the citizen. 
and then it will be finally final checking by Fenier engineer and then also there could be two situation one could be no one could be yes and if yes it could be forwarded to the board whoever is the top person of the board it can be a chairperson or mayor mayor so they give the final approval approval so that approval is final approval is given to the citizen so you can see that in this mechanism i tried to to map the process or the stages of that sanctioning or the approval process starting from a common citizen submits the paper it is screened by a junior engineer then it is screened by the senior engineer and then finally it is put up to the board and board finally accords the appro approval now please see the chart again in this chart the process which i showed by using the the arrows or the directions okay and the actions or stages so these are the stages these are the stages or steps so the method by which a, a sequential stages or or steps are shown with uh, direction showing the arrows this is called a process so this particular thing is called called as process which gives the direction of the particular function now if i ask you that for every stage like stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 stage 4 what is the system or tools uh, used for checking or for giving taking a decision for example see the chart once again in the first stage where the citizen submits the application with all documents how it is being received is there any there could be a kind of a checklist checklist to check whether the the documents submitted are as per the requirement or not the stage 2 and stage 3 how they are uh, they are checking maybe they are checking manually or they can check by by it based operation that is the computerized system so they can check manually or even it based similarly for the first stage they can also uh, submit manually or they can submit online or it based best, best platform right so the interface by which a common man interacts with the process or the internal people who are working in the process they are interfacing they are interfering or in, interacting with the process that particular interface is called systems for this case a checklist could be a system a manual uh, checking method could be a system and it based platform online submission could be a system so system is basically is a tool interface interface with the process and this system could be different for each and every stage so that is how we uh, define the systems and process now you can understand that if the process is so lengthy that actually it needs three to fourth stage but it is designed or it is being continued as a say eight to ten stage definitely it will take more time than what is required 
at the same time if every stages uh, the systems which they are using the system is very old system is basically manual which is uh, having error or possibility of the more error. So, that can take not only the more time that can also uh, divert the, uh, the screening process or approval process uh, to a wrong decision. So, those kind of errors are there in the internal systems and process. This is the reason that some organizations they are not able to provide the essential service within the time period. The way we discuss that citizens uh, interface or citizens charter, in the citizens charter people uh, get to know that within what time I will I am going to get such and such services. So, it is the responsibility of the organization to provide that service. Now, unless you rationalize or see the process and rationalize the process that at every stage how much time you will give. For example, in this current example what we uh, discussed please see the chart once again like in stage 1 how much time it is required from stage 1 to stage 2 it is just uh, checking of the checklist and forwarding the application to the junior engineer. So, maybe maximum 1 to 2 days could be required. Similarly, in the stage 2 based on the number of people and the number of application received may be 7 days maximum and in the stage 3 if we consider another 7 days then in the stage 4 in the stage 4 we can understand another 7 to 10 days we are assuming all this just to calculate or so total you can understand that between 20 to 30 days it is possible to give an approval of a building plan. So, but if this process is too lengthy and have more stages than what we discussed definitely it will have more time and transfer time between one stage to another stage, one section to another section, one table to another table this also takes not only time, time extra manpower and also and also it brings and invites so many malpractices in the municipality, corruptions and the non-transparent conditions in the municipality. That is why if the system and process is improved, it can the service delivery can be improved. So, basically system is the process is the is sequence and system is basically the interface as I discussed with you with the, the, the process. So, therefore, you can see the process is a conceptual sequence of the events enables the, the people in business to do what they want to do and systems are what is uh, what they use to execute the process that means the interface. Next is the process is a continuous ac action and system is a tool to help in the process. Next, process is a journey and system is the mode of the journey. It is like uh, uh, you are taking a vehicle and uh, reaching somewhere and after that you are changing the vehicle reaching some other place. So, here your journey is the process how you start from origin and reach in a destination point and in the whole journey you can change the various modes and, uh, and, and transfer from one mode to another mode that is also taking time. Therefore, every system, every mode takes specific time, they demand specific treatment and transfer from one mode to another mode is also important. Therefore, process is a journey, system is the mode for the journey. Now, I show some of the examples of the process flowchart. This is a typical one process flowchart of uh, solid waste uh, management of a municipality you can see that how it is shown this is a typical example like from starting from generation to separation then from the separation it is going to the transfer station then from the transfer station you are taking it from the recycling companies some amount is going to landfill site and then some amount is going to compost plan so this is a complete uh, uh, complete uh, flow chart of the process flow chart of the solid waste management. Next, you can see this is a uh, typical uh, process flow chart of a training evaluation, how a training can be done. So, course is given, then uh, the, co the course director that he makes the uh, evaluation report and submits, then discuss and evaluate with crore tenors, formulate recommendation, prepare final course report, and that is how 
with decision making uh, processes they come to a final evaluation completed through various processes. Similarly, we can make various process flowchart for each and every activity or service in the municipality. For example, there could be process flowchart for sanctioning water supply connection. There could be process for birth and death certificate issuance. There could be process for mutation. I hope you know that meaning of the mutation. Mutation is basically the process by which the name of the owner of a particular plot is changed in the register of the municipality that process is called mutation. Then there could be process of getting trade license. getting advertisement, then building plan sanction, then tax assessment and recovery, then even solid waste management service, etcetera. So, these there are many actually. So, apart from this is the regular job, apart from that there could be like the process of uh, granting subsidy and allowances, allowances there could be process of process of plan making that could be also mapped using a flow chart and that could be a process of um, collection, collection of citizens contribution, contribution and then there are other entitlement, any other entitlement that could be mapped with the process flow chart. So, this uh, with this uh, flow chart you can see the flow chart and you can assess and you can rationalize that whether this flow chart can be reduced to a lesser number of stages so that you can minimize the time requirement. This is another uh, process flow chart that how a project preparation activity takes place. So, there are very many, uh, many examples you can see your examples also. Now, how we can process we can improve the process and systems improvement that is very important because if you take if you if you do not take every sections every activity as I discussed and map the process rationalize the process reduce the uh, the time taken for each process improve the systems which is uh, being used and come to a new system more efficient system you cannot improve. So, there are the some um, um, essential steps for example, as I discussed number one is that first is the process mapping. Process mapping then rationalize and re engineer. That means, re-engineer means reducing time, steps and manpower. Maybe earlier that process was required 3 to 4 manpowers involvement, but now you are reducing to maybe 1 or 2 manpowers involvement like that. Then, then assess the existing system. system and then improve the system either by improving technology and or improving the skill of the people who are working skills skills you can hire also 
if required for some time and you so this kind of uh, improvement and also not only technology you need specialized equipments in some cases. For example, this NPTEL course what we are running without this essential equipments, without the essential technological um, setup, it is very unable, it, it very difficult to deliver online courses. Similarly, uh, similarly and because of this uh, online courses, you do not need to organize the physical courses in the universities, like you do not need uh, the hostel accommodation, you do not need so many advantages there. Similarly, there could be some stages in the municipal uh, service delivery, which could be converted to online mode, so that you do not need to um, 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 interface or, or you reduce the interface with the people or interface with the logistics or the uh, material requirement. Right? So, after that you finalize the revised process and system both. So, if you follow this process, then it is possible in this whole mechanism wh whatever you do, now definitely the process and system improvement is an action, this is a action under organization development. development. Therefore, whatever funding is required for this action, so funding should be earmarked, should be earmarked in city development plan itself CDP. So, and definitely you need to mobilize the funding from the central or the other sources, so that you can do the process and system improvement. So, the process and systems improvement is like uh, your, your internal circulation of your body uh, and because of that uh, you are able to perform day to day services. Uh, if you do not take uh, food or water or uh, sound sleep, then you cannot work. Similarly, process and sim systems are like internal systems, this enables an organization to perform better. So, now you can see this is an example of that using the online building plan uh, sanctioning, how government ca could deliver 500 building plans, this is a newspaper clippings from uh, Times of India. Then so, what your role is? So, this I discussed uh, before. So, rationalize the processes and in, uh, re engineer it based on time, manpower, etcetera. Identify the obsolete systems and replace it with new and efficient one. Avoid fear. In the beginning, always we have seen that in the uh, when you try to um, change the system, there is a, a kind of a fear or the resistance. I can share my experience when the first time the computerization came in the municipality in the banking service, people was in a fear, they tried to resist the computerization, but after some time when they accepted and when they um, understood the benefit of the computerization, they accepted it. So, it needs constant persuasion, um, negotiation, counseling and convincing of the people, so that you can avoid the avoid and the eliminate the fear. And please do take the stakeholders consultation which is required. Then training and capacity building is required, uh, for that you earmark the found fund. Pilot testing, feedback and improvement, the moment you change the system and the process, you do not assume that the new system and the new process will work fantastic in the next, uh, very next day. So, therefore, it is required that you test a pilot uh, case or for some time, maybe for one month or six months, you keep the pro new process and systems under observation and you uh, try to observe, try to note down or document the problems faced by, the issues faced by the people and the people who are working in the systems and process, so that you can improve it and take the regular feedback from the citizen, so that you can improve. Then assess the condition for in regular intervention what process you are doing now within 5 years that process and systems could be obsolete again. So, after some interval uh, for example, every 3 years there could be should be a, a kind of a audit of a uh, process and system, so that you can improve it um, regularly. So, that is a regular job of a uh, leader of a organization, it can be a municipal commissioner, it can be executive officer, it is their job to assess every time the condition of the process and systems and re-engineer it 
time to time. Now, in this uh, context I would like to mention that the essence of e-governance you might have heard this uh, terminology. So, the e-governance uh, basically came as the essence to help government to improve this process and systems both, so that it can improve the service delivery. delivery and uh, better accountability and also transparency. So, the objective of the in governance was to integrate the, the transactions at the central level, state level, local level and even my grassroots level in, in a common platform of the information technology. So, that there is a seamless connection with the information and some of the information is available to the common people and common people can access that information, they can interact for day to day uh, services and the services or the processes uh, is also done on the e-governance platform. So, that instead of manual process people can interface with the system uh, through online or through other efficient mode that was the importance of the uh, e-governance. So, some of the essence of the governance you can see some points like it involves process of reform in the government how they work share information I told you. So, it is not only the external it is internal people it is external and internal clients both that means the citizens and also to the external people who are coming to the city for, in, for investment for uh, different purposes. Then clear intent of greater transparency in functioning then greater efficiency online delivery of the services, this is much more important for day to day transaction. Then you are using information technology using wide area network, using internet, then so many uh, tools are there, you are, user, you are basically using this so that you can achieve all this benefit. Then online always does not uh, necessarily in, uh, imply internet, there are other modes like it can be offline also, but the interface will be uh, based on IT. For example, when you uh, submit even physically some uh, documents or some form to the municipality or some bank, it may not be online, but they sometimes process is through some computerized system. So, those, those kind of system may not be online every time, but uh, the system is different which is not exactly the manual system and uh, it reduces the error. So, this kind of uh, advantages is there and it results the benefit. Uh, towards the transparency, empowerment, greater convenience, less corruption. After the uh, RTI Act, now it is very easy for a common citizens to ask for an information and uh, initially it was very difficult for government organization to provide any information because all the informations were recorded manually in the file noting or in the documents, hard copy document, but now after the e-governance platform uh, almost uh, major section, major portion of the informations are there in the uh, online platform and that online platform or the e-platform uh, is being used by the internal people that the government organization as well as the, the external people seamlessly and that is a great benefit in the current days. So, you need to have a robust capacity building for uh, e-governance. So, uh, just see the keywords, the standards of the facilities, uniform interactions. Okay, then reduced cost, effective communication with government, businesses and citizens, easy interconnection through the uh, government department and the other department, reusability of the elements, the process, design pattern, technology component. Now, since we have for our country, we have multiple layers, multiple layers basically our system will work like this. So, we have uh, uh, a state department or any nodal department from the nodal department basically there are district level administration or the department which is working and then uh, village level or city level organizations who are working. This is how this is a schematic diagram how the seamless information and the connectivity could be there for day to day uh, information sharing. Then this is another diagram.
this is another uh, indicative flow chart for the electronic service delivery mode. This is a general uh, flow chart, but definitely this can be customized for each and every uh, flow chart, process flow chart for your municipality. This is the for, uh, front page of the national e-governance plan, plan. This as in short it is called uh, NEGP. So, government has a robust uh, e-governance plans not only for the urban uh, governance, but also the every other sector of the governance. It can be rural governance, district level, state level, every level. So, please go through this site, you will get to know some uh, latest information what is going on in the e-governance platform. So, there are very uh, much uh, advantages and the uh, advances. Let us see some of the advances that people have appreciated. For example, right now we use railway reservation system then we uh, we pay for garbage collection then we uh, the websites which is equi uh, re which is used for the printing of the government forms then tax collection then business regist registration in some of the countries then e procurement which has happened in india also now in india also e procurement is going on then income tax online income tax is through the online platform in india also the customs online municipal service delivery and rural internet kiosk then teaching transfer uh, in uh, uh, for example this nptl and whole soim platform is a is a is happening on the e platforms therefore it is not only the basic not only the basic service it is the teaching platform apart from that e lanka e bharat all these are national e government program uh, for the uh, not only india of the other countries some other e-government or e-delivery service like in Karnataka, they have started issuance of the land titled uh, railway reservations I, I have already told you. Uh, property registration is in Maharashtra uh, through the e-platform, e-seva center in the Andhra Pradesh and then open online tracking in Swell municipality, then citizen service center for some of the municipalities. So, these are the, uh, uh, the achievement and uh, these are uh, indicative. I hope that at your place, it your, in your district and in your uh, local bodies, you must have taken some of the activities, some of the actions in uh, changing the process, changing the systems and integrating the e-governance platform given by the government of India. And now another advantage of this platform is that if you want to change the systems and process, there will not be any dearth of funding, there will not be any shortage of the funding, government will uh, give the necessary funding, it is only your preparedness and proactiveness which matters and that is why that is how you can definitely mobilize the fund and improve your condition. So, definitely with the governance and the better systems and service the satisfaction level is improved this is um, for city of the Bangalore from some past studies. So, with this I would like to um, summarize and conclude today's lecture. So, in, in this lecture we have tried to discuss uh, the various methods of the process and systems which is required to mobilize the internal functions of an organization under the overall uh, organization development framework uh, the systems and process improvement is very much essential because whatever we do as a day to day uh, service delivery every work. Uh, relates to a particular process flow which is nothing but the sequential uh, activity or arrangement of the various stages of the steps that is called process and for every process every stage or every step uh, it is done uh, by some particular systems it could be manual system or online system computerized system systems using uh, some guidelines checklist or various methods are there now how we can change the process and systems towards minimizing the time taken, towards minimizing the hassles, towards minimizing the uh, wastage and the errors that is the es essence. So, task uh, what is required to do is that uh, to rationalize the process, minimize the process timing, minimize the manpower etcetera and improve the system from the manual to uh, uh, to the online platform or it is a it can be a combination of that and time to time it is required to assess the uh, systems and process and again re-engineer and, uh, and change it. And in this context, in this note, we have also discussed the essence of e-governance. The objective of e-governance activity in the India, which came as a major reform after JNNU RM, uh, was to improve the service delivery at all level, including the urban governments. Now, 
e-governance platform, it is the seamless connectivity between the central, state and local level government. So, your organization if you are working in a development authority or uh, public sector organization or the urban governments, definitely you can change your process and systems and take maximum advantage of the e-governance um, activity. I have shown some of the refer um, um, resources and references, some are some will be also given to you, therefore, you can go through and can take the essential learning out of that. So, with this I would like to um, conclude, next day I will discuss on the urban reforms and the managing change which is also very much important including this uh, e-governance there are various other reforms which came in the urban sector in last 10 years or so and those reforms were basically subjected to change the performance of the organization that is what we are going to discuss in the next lecture. So, for, for today's lecture I thank you very much for attending.